Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Welcome to Fairfield Today, friends. Good to have you with us. Paul Jasson, we were downtown at the uh, beautiful lobby of Fairfield Federal and uh, another beautiful day here as we talk about this for winter. It's pretty daggone good right now. One of the things we always enjoy talking about is we, we talk about theater and so much of it revolves around, of course, Ohio University, Lancaster with Victor Jones and everything he does. But then, of course, we have the, the Garrett Players and Lancaster Playhouse. They all have some wonderful, wonderful plays several times a year. We talk about that. But one of the things we do and talk about, too, is the schools always have great plays and great musicals. And, and every year we get to talk to a few of them. Uh, today is one of those examples of that with the Liberty Union school system up there in Baltimore uh, doing their latest musical and it, it's, a, it's a fabulous one too called Peter Pan, uh, Peter Pan Jr. I guess is the official title with that. And we've got a couple of folks with us today. We've got Jill Henwood. Jill is the director of Peter Pan Jr. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Okay, Peter Pan Jr. And we've got Bailey Shy. Bailey is a sophomore at Liberty Union, at the Liberty Union High School. Sophomore up there, and actually this is Peter Pan. So we've got royalty here with <laughs> us today. And, and, and Jill, first of all, uh, uh, did you pick out Peter Pan Jr. as the play you wanted to do? So we have been, we've been looking at Peter Pan for a few years really? and the only way that we wanted to do Peter Pan was if we could fly it fly. and <laughs> fly yeah so uh, it just it, it worked out we had a really great uh, musical last year we did the Wizard of Oz mm -hmm. and it was uh, it was wonderful and so we we had the funds and we thought you know what this is let's let's go ahead and let's reach out to some flying companies and see if this is something that we can can pull off and so we decided to do the one act version just because it is it's my first time flying um, it's the school district's first time flying you know we had to we had to bring in a truss for the for the stage in order to put you know all of the tracks and uh, pendulum system in that we needed to do and so it's been a really big undertaking uh, on the back end for all of it plus you know just everything that comes with a musical with sets and props and and you know we have a large cast because we open it up to to all ages in the school district and um, yeah, so they're doing great, and uh, it's 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 turned out to be a really really fun show, and I think they're having fun with it, and it's been a big learning experience for everybody. Well, Bailey, let's uh, let's think about this for a little bit. When I'd say it's been a learning experience, as Joe indicated, I'm sure that's true. You're a sophomore. Have you been in other plays prior to this? Yeah. Yes. yes. Nothing like this, I suspect. <laughs> no, nothing. Now, I don't know how many people fly in this, but uh, you are Peter Pan mm -hmm. in this, and you actually do, obviously, the major part of the flying. Is that crazy to be up there doing that and, and reciting your parts and s actually singing while you're flying? It's definitely a learning experience in that sense of, like, you're used to doing it on the ground, and you get comfortable delivering lines and singing and all that, and then you add this element of, swinging in the air and not really having control of your movement and trying to keep yourself turned the right way. Sure. I'm also afraid of heights, so there's a little bit of that. <laughs> Perfect um. person here. That's amazing. <laughs> we uh, didn't know that until the day that we started flying either. Yeah. She didn't share she that didn't with share you? She didn't share that oh. part with us. Well, we you like, want the wow. part so badly? You, yeah, if I do that, <laughs> I might not get the part. It's I get fine. that. That's, that's theater folk. What are you going to do? You know that, Jill. So so you're, you're Peter Pan on this, and you're probably on... In, in one big act, you're probably on most of the most of the time you're out there, and so uh, you 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 actually act some. You get to act some on the stage. You get to sing some, and then you're flying and doing that. So that's uh, again, uh, I don't I don't. You can't practice for that, I guess, uh, <laughs> except when you actually try it and do it. it. First time was that pretty crazy? Yeah, it was. It, it was a lot of. <laughs> it was just. Were you upside down sometimes trying to sing? Ooh, not, not quite upside down. Okay. But I was, it's that, oh, you have to sing, but then you have to remember to kick your legs so that you're facing the audience, and you have to remember to breathe. 
because it's harder to breathe when you're not anchored to the ground. Uh, so probably wearing that. some kind of harness too, and a lot of yeah. a lot of safety things like that. You know, so, oh yeah. Yeah, but Jill, was it was it, uh, it was the school an issue trying to get them to sign off on this? I would think the schools would be a little nervous about this. Well, the school has been great. Oh, great. Yeah, they've been great about it, and even letting us, you know, bring in the the <laughs> extra equipment that we would need um, to do this and maybe even do it in the future um they've they've been great about about you know doing contracts with us with the flying company and you know getting us what we need and um yeah no we haven't really had any any issues that way i would i would say and then you mentioned kind of the the back of the house kind of stuff from what people will see it'll just look like another play another musical but there's a lot going on that we don't see i suspect yeah we have and you know it 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 takes a school district to put this on because we have you know we have obviously all of our people who always help us with sets and props and costumes and uh, the art department at the high school is helping us with some of um, the set creation but we also had to reach out and find people to fly um, not to so you know we have actors who fly, but the people who who are behind the scenes who are pulling all the all of the ropes. So Peter has two people who fly her because she has um, a track that goes um, across the stage as well as the lift part of wow. her. So her dad is actually flying her up and down, Ooh. and then uh, another one of our actors' father is doing her side to side movement. And then we have three people on what's called a pendulum uh, uh, track, which has three three pendulums on it for our um, uh, Wendy Michael John actors who are flying and they just do an up and down they don't go side to side but a pendulum you know basically if you start here you're gonna pendulum that much that way so that was you know it was all kind of trial and error of, of where you can set the sets that they don't run into them how, how much space they have to do that pendulum flying effect and being lift at the same time. So it's definitely been a lot to come, you know, kind of think through. And when we were blocking, it was more of a, um, okay, so this is what I think you're going to do, but <laughs> that could change when the flying people get here. And yeah. for the most part, I feel like we did okay with that, but there was definitely some that's probably not something we can do. And so, yeah. Jill Henwood and Bailey Shy are with us from uh, Peter Pan Jr., the musical. It's uh, at Liberty Union High School, and it's March 15th, 16th at 7.30 p.m. in the evening, and then they have a matinee, that's a Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday the 17th at 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the afternoon for the uh, for that one. And where can they get tickets, or how can they acquire tickets? So tickets are online at libertyunion.org on the, on the homepage of the school's website. You can also get them, we're on social media, and there's links on social media where they can pick them up, and you can see lots of pictures, and we have some flying uh, videos on there. We have the first time that she went up in the air on there. Um, like she said, it's really hard to keep your body. You don't think about that, but as soon as you start to, to lift, you start to rotate. And so they've got to a lot of movement. move their body to try yeah. to always stay forward. And that's probably maybe the hardest part of, of, of doing the flying is keeping their bodies where they need to be. Now, Bailey, I think I asked you that before. You've been in previous plays. I know you're only a sophomore at Liberty Union, but you've been in other plays, school plays. Yeah. Yeah. I did Wizard of Oz last year. And then, um, Matilda, Freaky Friday, and Annie. But no flying. No flying. No flying. Yeah. Now, were you looking forward to this when you signed on to this? Because I guess you knew this would be part of the gig. Yeah, it was definitely, at the time that we auditioned, we weren't 100% sure that we could still fly yet. But we knew that they wanted to fly That it. was the plan. Yeah, and my friends and I were kind of freaking out about it. We were really excited. So you've got, what, four people, Jill, that actually fly? We have four people who fly, yeah, um, and then we have, our cast is amazing. Uh, Drew Morris is, is uh, Hook, he plays Captain Hook, mm -hmm. and um, I'm just so proud of Drew. He just, he's been doing lights for us the last few years. Uh, he kind of stepped, he was in Matilda as one of the kids, and then he kind of stepped away and wanted to do more techie stuff and um, he's fabulous at lights and so we reached out we have another student who's going to do lights for us this year and he's doing great as well but drew stepped into the the role of captain hook and he's just he's so good he's just so good in it and uh you know we have you know uh, reagan thomas is tiger lily 
Um, we've got Macy Buskirk as Mrs. Darling and Charlie Sponseller as, as Mr. Darling. And we have um, Sienna Lodge's uh, uh, yeah. Nana, who is the dog, who plays the dog that nice. takes care of all of the kids. And um, she, I, I just love that part. And she's added some things to it. And so I think everyone's going to really enjoy enjoy the dog and the costume is is kind of epic i can't wait for everybody <laughs> to see nana um so yeah there's there's lots of of fun things in the show and and you know the flying is just an added bonus so i imagine bailey this is probably maybe the most fun you've had oh, yeah. in being in a play oh yeah 100 percent. yeah would you do it again if you knew what this was? Would you get involved in this? Now you're into yes, it. Yes, I would 100% do this again any day. How many uh, how many students do you have in the play altogether? Gosh, you know what? I'm not. I was thinking about that when we came in. We probably have 55. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, 55 around some somewhere around there. So we try to open it up to as many kids as possible <clears throat> to give them that experience of of you know st either starting or you know getting if they're high schoolers getting them some good experience before they go off to college well it's getting close to showtime here you think uh, everybody's gonna be ready yeah I think I think we're all gonna be ready it'll be it's this is the week of like oh no we're not ready and then next week it's like oh no we're ready this yeah. is fine there's always that little panic but, time that sets in like I don't know my lines I don't but yeah it, but it'll calm down so Good luck on this. This is Peter Pan Jr. It's at Liberty Union Musical Theater. Uh, how many years you've been doing this up there, Jill? I uh, I started with Annie, and I think that was in 2016. So it's so, been a while, but yeah. this is, uh, I think, the most industrious one you've, you've this, taken on. This, this is the is big one. This is the big deal. So we'll see how you top this next year. That should, I know, right? That should yeah. be fun to see. Be prepared next year if you're in on oh this boy. as a junior. We'll see. <laughs> Peter Pan Jr., it's March 15th through the 17th at Liberty Union High School. 15th and 16th, Friday and Saturday, it's uh, 7.30, and then on Sunday at 2.30 p.m., the matinee. So good luck on this. It's just going to be great fun. Everybody's going to just be wow moment when they see this. So yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Thank sure. You. We'll be back in just a moment. The reason why I do what I do is I love helping people, and um, I really love to work on understanding and striving um, to improve the lives of the people in our community. Being in Fairfield County is having a network of people around you. I am driven by my belief that every individual um, deserves an opportunity to achieve mental um, and emotional balance, and I'm very passionate about contributing to that process. Community, connections, collaboration. The Fairfield County Way. The staff that have been here know what it takes. They've been on the other side. They see what it takes to make someone comfortable, to make the family comfortable, and really what kind of support they need. And so I think that's what really makes Fairhope what it is. I want a doctor who listens to me. From primary care to specialty medicine, we put your needs first by treating you like a person, not a number. Our primary care team will help you identify your healthcare needs and set goals for success, regardless of where you are in your wellness journey. We care for patients of all ages, with offices that are close to you. Whatever you're searching for, you can find it at Fairfield Medical Center. Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Our people make the difference. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. Stop by today at any of our three locations and see why the difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. 
We here at Fairfield DD wish you a happy new year. March is right around the corner, and with it comes Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. This year, Fairfield DD is excited to share that we will have a variety of events to mark this important month. Our 14th annual Celebration of Possibilities will be held on Wednesday, March 20th at 6 p.m. at the Wigwam Event Center in Pickerington. So save the date. Join our mailing list or follow our social media so you can stay up to date on all the happenings. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Welcome back to Fairfield today. Another great looking day uh, in Lancaster, downtown Lancaster. Pleasure to be with you. We're going to talk the arts here a little bit here. Coming up, and uh, I, I guess the term they use and it is an insanely charming comedy. That's right. That sounds great, doesn't it? With <laughs> Lancaster Playhouse, we've got the president of the board. Right. President of the board, Jane O'Brien, with us from the Lancaster Playhouse. And you've got the Curious Savage. Yes. Great title. Curious Savage. <laughs> the Curious That's, Savage. That sounds wild. It, insanely great An insanely comedy. charming comedy. Okay. Um, so the play is set in um, at a place called The Cloisters. You know, it's, it's, it's 1950, and the show was first done in 1950. And even though it's 70 years old, I'm telling you, it, it is not dated. Timely. It's lovely. It, it, we timely almost made it an insanely timely charming comedy, <laughs> but it just wouldn't fit. Wouldn't fit um, on the wouldn't board. Wouldn't fit. Um, but this is not one flew over the cuckoo's nest, okay. you know, yeah. I, you know, there's that sort of idea as my husband is a physician and we've talked and he's like, psychiatry was really in its infancy in the 1950s. I think it was very progressive at the time. So the cloisters is, is a, is a home base where people live and really the residents are what make this the most charming play, uh, right? just a lovely group of people. So there's the residents, there's the staff, and then there's the savage family. Uh, and that's where the curious savage they're comes the from. Savage. Savages. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sounds like uh, it's got great possibilities here. Sounds like it will be great fun. Uh, early in April, April 5th, 12th, and 13th. Right. At uh, 7:30 p.m. in the evening, and then April 6th and 14th at 2 o'clock. So you get you're gonna have a few runs on this. Yes, we're doing five shows, and we have two matinees. The first weekend is a Saturday matinee. The second weekend is a Sunday matinee. We find that our audience likes the matinees. And yeah. we've discussed going to three matinees, but we held back this time. So we have three evening shows and then the two matinees. So and, lots of opportunities. And we can say that as we're you know, telecasting here from uh, downtown at Fairfield Federal, we can look at your location right, right up here. Maria's about 100 yards away from here. Right. And as I remember that, back when it used to be the Elks many years ago, and I think about that uh, big ballroom there and that big... Uh, big stage up there what, what a great venue oh we are so fortunate we are so fortunate to be doing our shows at Maria's next door it's a big space behind the restaurant as you say it has a stage we actually bring in um, platforming to extend the stage out to make it even larger and um, this is going to be a, a set that's just the cloisters so it's one set it doesn't change well it's non-stop action once the play starts sure. um, but uh, Chico at Maria's has just they've been and wonderful hosts and we are thrilled to be downtown well that's that's you know I guess destination downtown would say that's the place to be yes, and, it and is. I think most of us would agree the the activity down here the movement the the people everything going on uh, you just can't uh, put that anywhere else right right so it's a uh, it, it's uh, coming up in early April now is how many plays this year Instead of doing a normal, a regular fall show, which is what traditionally we would do, the Lancaster Playhouse is taking a lead on the uh, Christmas collaboration. Oh. So in December, oh, yeah. we'll be working with Ohio University, Lancaster, and the Garrett Players. And I, I guess I can announce now we have purchased the rights. Um, oh, I'm not sure it's official, official. I might get in trouble. But we are going to be doing... It's going to be a biggie? It, it's a biggie. It is... Um, is that around Christmas We've time? We've applied. Is that I don't around? know if they've cashed our check. Um, it's um, the first weekend in December. Yes. 
and um, the plan is to do a, um, a lovely version of the Christmas Carol by Michael Wilson and nice. Victor Jones and Ohio University Lancaster is committed to doing all of the extras, all of the tech that That's, will make this an incredibly special production. That's going to be a big deal. And our artistic director, PJ Aubrey, will be directing. So that is going to take a lot of energy. And that's why we're foregoing a regular fall show and working on that. So the, uh, watch for some small things to maybe happen in between because we want to keep all of our new members active. So, what, nine or ten years the Playhouse been around now? Yeah, it'll be ten, 2025 will be our 10-year anniversary. Ten years. And... Uh, Several plays a year. You're involved in uh, in in lots of activity. It won't be a fall one this year, as we said. It may look more toward the winter as you right. move into that collaboration. That's worked out really well the last couple of years oh, it's with been wonderful. Uh, with you, the Garrett players, and with uh, Victor out of Ohio University. University Lancaster, uh, right. That's a lot of resources put into one thing, it's and, and it's always panned out great. It's been lovely working with the um, the three groups working together. I think it helps theater in our general sure. area because we're. <laughs> we're friends and we're communicating and that's a good thing um, it creates opportunity for our actors and volunteers to work in a traditional theatrical space with real lighting and things like that um, yeah. a curtain <laughs> yeah. I want to be in this play I've never been on a stage with a curtain <laughs> so nice, um, nice. that would be nice so it's a, it, it is great and and I think I've talked this before with with Victor especially when it's been on but I think there was a time, as there was with, say, music and singing here, where if you left Lancaster in high school and came back, maybe there wasn't any place to you to apply your craft. If you were a singer, maybe you didn't have that, but now you've got the corral, you've got the community chorus, you've got a women's barber shop, you've got the, the Lancaster men's chorus. But I think the same thing holds true for the arts. Uh, maybe there wasn't a thing. Maybe you'd had to go to the Kenley Players years ago in Columbus to mm -hmm. do that, but now uh, the schools, I know Millersport and Liberty Union and, and other areas around have uh, school plays they've got going on and, and big things in their community theater there but then uh, as we mentioned we've got you the, the, of course Ohio University and the Garrett players uh, there's real opportunities for certainly local but regional people to absolutely perform. and one of the things I love about the show we're doing right now there's 11 cast members and six of them are first time on our stage with really? just us at um, Maria's so you're bringing in and, and some of them are young <laughs> which is lovely <laughs> we want young people uh, we we want to be able to do um shows with a diverse cast we, we'd love to grow even more and we have new volunteers this show we have um ken culver's um running point on building our set and mark friend uh the builder is working with him he's to built do a few that. things he's built a few things i think he can do a, a half a room <laughs> not a problem um linda kaufman our previous board chair is running ticket sales so if you call the lancaster playhouse box office i'm not answering this show linda is doing it it's a good thing She'll um do a good job. uh kim wickham who's been on our stage a few times as our house manager so I'm excited about the Lancaster Playhouse because we are finally building out and growing and that will make it so we can consistently do two to three shows a year nice. without burning out. Talk a little bit more about The Curious Savage. It's April 5th, 12th, and 13th at 7.30 p.m. and then April 6th and 14th you have matinees at 2 o'clock. One's a Saturday, one's a Sunday. Is Correct. You okay. Correct. And it's up here at Maria's, again, just up Main Street Hill. As we look up right now, it's ahead of us here. So so The Curious Savage, does this uh, take place in a home? Yes. Yeah, so, so basically, I don't want to... Spoiler alert, no. I don't want to spoil the no, play. No, no. But, um, so, Mrs. Savage is a wealthy widow. Her husband has passed away. She has three stepchildren. The stepchildren would like to keep control of the family money. Mrs. Savage has different ideas about oh. how the money should be used and mm -hmm. spent. So, they basically, this back in 1950, they commit her to stop her from achieving her dream. Good luck. Yeah. So that's basically the setup for the show. So you have the residents, you have the, the, the three siblings, the three stepchildren who come in, and then you have the staff, and then it plays forward. Um, you know, it almost sounds corny, but I'll tell you, when I finished Bedroom Farce, I was in that show, and I'm the chair. I was tired, and I said, I will take a break, I will take a break. And then I read the script, and I said, you know what I need more than rest? I need the Curious Savage in my life right now, and it is that kind of show. It's 
extremely well written. Um, the dialogue is tight and concise, um, but the characters are beautiful and lovely, and it's the perfect show for spring. And just to wake you up, and you'll be able to walk out and look at a new day. It's, so it's, it's two acts have an intermission? It is. Um, it's written as three acts. I'm not sure how they did it in 1950, but we are splitting in the second act. So okay. it will be done as two acts with an intermission in the middle. And fortunately, at the um, at uh, Maria's, we have um, there's a bar in the restaurant, and we try to do a bar in the theater. So there's refreshments. Adult you can, beverages, Adult perhaps. beverages. Nice. Pre always, because always in the restaurant, mainly, sometimes, mostly in the um, theater. But you can bring drinks into the theater that are purchased at Maria's. So um, pre-show, you can enjoy an adult beverage or dinner or whatever. Sure. And at intermission, you can, you can enjoy another. And location, the, and the location, second, location. Uh, that's right. And the second half of the show. Good. We'll, we'll put the picture up there. Is, is the phone number, that's Linda's? Right. It's um, you know, the Lancaster Playhouse box office. It's nice. a cell phone that sits on our mantles, whoever's in charge of it at that nice. time. But tickets are on sale through our website, um, The Lancaster. Don't forget the The, or you'll end up in Pennsylvania. The Lancaster yeah. Playhouse.org, <laughs> or you can call the box office. 407 2784 is the number, Eric code 740, 740, of course. Right. That's it. And again, when we put the poster up, you'll see a QR code. You could always do that. You get pretty high tech here with QR codes. And I know. I know, really. People are loving our new ticket site. We're using Ludus, and it seems to really be simple and um, very user friendly. Well, very so good. Get online it's and the grab Curious your seats. Savage. You are who? Mrs. Savage? I am Mrs. Savage. Mrs. Savage. That's why I'm wearing pearls. All right. Mm -hmm. it's perfect for that. Yes. Uh, it's it's an insanely charming comedy. It'll be April 5, 12, 13 in the evening at 7.30. And then they have two matinees on April 6 and 14th at 2 o'clock right up here at Maria's right up the hill from us. Uh, sounds like a wonderful time. Could so, be had yes. by all. Yes. Great fun. Good luck with that. Thank you. Thanks, Jane O'Brien, uh, President <laughs> of the Board, Lancaster Playhouse. Good to have you with us. Thank you. And we want to thank you for joining us on Fairfield Today. Interface Video, in cooperation with Fairfield Federal, presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Adam H., Dagger Law, and the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities.